So now that I am ready and signed into my Chrome account, let's talk about how to get to Google Classroom. I'm gonna click on that Chrome browser. Uh-oh, if you notice, this is my mom's account again. But since I've already signed into Chrome, I can click on that icon on the taskbar and I can find my account signed in. And that's gonna take me to my account now. In my account, this is the home screen that comes up is the APS website. But I want to go to www.google.com in order to access my Google Apps. Once I'm at google.com, I notice that my Chrome browser and my Google account are the same. Next to my icon for my Google account, there's something we call the waffle. I'm gonna click on that and that's gonna lead me to all of my Google apps that I can use through APS. We call this the G Suite for Education. Up in the top, I can see that there's a Google Classroom icon, so I'm gonna click on that. And this is gonna take me to something called the Google Classroom Dashboard. This is where all the Google Classrooms that I am logged into as a student are going to be. Now, there are two ways that my teacher can sign me up for a Google Classroom. So I'm going to show you that now from a teacher's point of view so you can see what this looks like as a student. I am in my teacher classroom right now as Mrs. Nunez. And as a student, I can enroll my students either with their APS credentials or with a classroom code. This is how you would sign in with a classroom code. Every Google Classroom has a code to sign into. So if your teacher sent your parents a code or they said, please sign into my Google Classroom using this code, this is how you would do it. You take that unique code that your teacher sent you and back in your Google Classroom dashboard right here, there's going to be a plus sign in the top right corner to join a class. When I click on that plus sign, making sure that I am in my Google account for school, I'm going to enter that class code right here, and I'm gonna select join. When I click on join using that code, it's gonna pop me into the screen where I'm going to be in my teacher's Google Classroom. That is one way to join a Google Classroom. There is another way, and it looks a little bit different. I'm back in my teacher's classroom and my teacher can actually invite me with my APS account. That was that number at APS.edu. I'm going to invite Elle as a student to join the Google Classroom right here as a teacher. I'm gonna invite that student to join. Now, right now, APS students do not have Gmail turned on for using it like an email, but they can still join a class in this way. I'm going to go back to Elle's account as a student, and I'm going to see on my dashboard, without clicking up here or joining a class or anything, I noticed that that classroom came up, and there is a join button right here in the bottom right corner. As a student, if my teacher has invited me using my APS credentials, it's going to automatically pop up in my dashboard, and all I have to do is click on the join button. It's going to push me right into that Google Classroom just like it did before. Now I'm enrolled as a student in the classroom. Here I am in my student classroom. On the stream, this is where all of the assignments that my teacher has posted are going to send notifications and reminders to me. Now some of your teachers may have these reminders turned off and you'll only see a way to have a discussion with your class. These are not where you complete your assignments. Where you should be completing your assignments is in the Classwork tab of Google Classroom. In the Stream area, which is this tab right here, is where you can post information or ask questions to your class if your teacher has this option turned on. I'm going to click next to this icon, and this is where you can ask questions or post information for your class. I'm going to select Post. And students, as well as my teacher, can respond back to me. Teachers can also post important announcements or information here in the stream. And if your teacher has this enabled, you'll be able to reply back. 
Now that I've gone over the stream in Google Classroom, let's go over to the Classwork tab. The Classwork tab is where all of the activities and assignments my teacher has assigned to me are going to be. I'm going to be able to work through all of these assignments and turn them into my teacher. All of my assignments are organized by something called a topic. Topics can be set up a lot of different ways. Some ways teachers can set up topics are by subject areas like reading, math, science, and social studies. Another way they can be set up is by units like this classroom. There's other ways right now where teachers may set up topics by activities to be completed for the week or even activities that can be completed by each day. The activities underneath the topic can be also organized in different ways. The newest activity may be on the top or the newest activity may be on the bottom. You're going to have to learn how your teacher has set up your Google Classroom. There are different types of activities that are available in Google Classroom, and we're going to look at those different types now and how those are turned into my teacher. I'm gonna go down to this math activity and I see that there is a material activity that's set up. This is called material because it has an icon that looks a little bit like a bookmark. And when I click on this activity itself, I'm able to view that material. When I go into this space, I can see all of the directions that I need to follow and anything my teacher wants me to see. A material activity is an activity that I do not need to turn back into my teacher. It is something my teacher either wanted me to read or look at or something she wanted to link to, but I don't actually have to turn it into the classroom. In this case, it is a link to my Prodigy account. I'm going to click here on the top of the screen and go back to my classwork to show you some other types of activities in Google Classroom. We just went over the material and now I'm going to come up here and I see that there's an icon that has a question mark. This is called a question assignment in Google Classroom. I'm going to click on the heading of this activity and I'm going to click on the link that says view question. This space now looks a lot different than the space when I had a material activity. When I had material, there was nothing on the right here. But now that this is a question, I am able to answer the question right here and turn that answer into my teacher. My teacher has put the questions right here. What were some different difficult challenges you've had to face? And then over here, I can actually watch a video straight from Google Classroom that my teacher had posted. I'm gonna go here and type in my answer and turn that in. I'm gonna confirm that I wanna turn in this answer. And now I see this little icon right here that says I can go and see my classmates' answers. When I click on that icon, I can see my answer posted here, but I can also read and reply to other students' answers right here in the space. I'm gonna go back to the classwork tab just like I did before. And now in my classwork, you see that that icon that was previously dark green has now been grayed out. Anytime I turn in an assignment through Google Classroom, those assignments will become grayed out. This way I can tell which activities are active that I still need to turn in and which ones I've already turned in. I'm gonna go up here to this top activity and show you another type of activity that's available in Google Classroom. The icon that looks like a clipboard has two different styles of activities. One is called an assignment that needs to be turned in, and one is set up as a quiz. I know that this assignment has been set up as a quiz because it has a Google form linked to it. I'm gonna click on view assignment, and it says that there is a quiz that I need to complete, and I'm gonna follow that link right here. When I follow the link to the quiz, I can do the quiz right from here in Google Classroom. Now. Pay attention to all of the directions and instructions, and it depends on how your teacher has set these questions up will determine how you will get your score at the very, very end of this quiz. And I'm gonna submit. And once I have submitted a quiz to Google Classroom, I'm able to view the accuracy of that quiz, and I'm also able to open that assignment to make sure that I've turned it in. Depending on how your teacher set this up, it may say view score as well. I'm going to click on view accuracy. 
and I can see which questions I have gotten correct and incorrect. And sometimes for incorrect answers, I will be able to be linked to an activity or assignment right away. I'm going to go back to my assignment tab and it says that my work has been turned in already right here. Now that I'm back in the classwork tab again, I see that two assignments have now been completed. Another type of assignment that is available with the same type of icon is an assignment that has an attachment that I need to return back to my teacher. I'm going to click here on this view assignment link and I see that there is work here that I need to fill out and then I need to turn in. More than likely, this is a template or an outline that my teacher has created that I need to complete. And I even noticed that my teacher has attached a rubric right here for me. So to get to this page, I'm going to click right here under your work. And I see that my name is right here on this document. When I click on it, it's going to have my own copy of this document. And I know that it's my own copy because it has my name right here in front of the file name. So I'm going to go here and finish up my document and filling it in. To save time, I've already filled in all of the other answers for each day. Now, this is this type of assignment that gets a little confusing to students. I do not need to make a copy of this. I do not need to upload this to my teacher. It automatically creates a brand new copy just for me in Google Classroom. Remember, the way to tell is that your name will be in front of the file name for this document. Do not rename this at all because your teacher will know who turned it in this way. Up in the very top, top corner of Google Classroom, I'm going to click the turn in button. Please do not share this with your teacher. That means you are sharing the permissions to your teacher, not that you are sharing it through Google Classroom. You're going to want to turn this in through Google Classroom. So through the document itself, I'm going to click on turn in. I could have turned it in here as well, but it's going to ask me if I for sure want to turn in this assignment. I'm going to say, yes, please turn it in. And it's going to show up here that I have turned in my work. Not all assignments that get turned in are always docs like we just saw. For example, in this activity, there is a Google slide presentation that I need to fill out and hand back into my teacher. There can also be, in the case of this math activity, an assignment where you need to upload a picture or a file to your teacher. To do that in the work section, click the plus sign and you can add an image from your drive, add a link or upload a file. In this case, I'm going to look for a picture and I'm going to add that to my work to show area and perimeter in my house. If you have the Google Classroom app on your phone, you're actually able to take a photo right from the Google Classroom app and turn that in as an assignment into Google Classroom. There are all the different types of assignments that you are gonna find in Google Classroom. Up here in the top of my classwork tab, there are some other icons that may be available. The first one is going to be the class drive folder. This is where all of your assignments are going to be kept from Google Classroom. Please do not move, delete, or change any of the assignments that you have turned in from Google Classroom because it will break that link from Google Classroom and they won't be able to be turned into your teacher. The other thing you have available is a Google Calendar. Anytime your teacher posts due dates or your teacher puts in specific information into the Google Calendar for the classroom, it will show up here in your Google Classroom as a date. The last type of icon that is available here on the Classwork tab is the Meet tab. If your teacher has set up a Meet, you can click on this Meet tab and go into a meet with your teacher. You cannot go into the meet through Google Classroom until your teacher has started the meet first. On this tab, you can also go to view your work. And I'm able to see all of the assignments they have assigned to me that I have not turned in, all of the ones that have been returned to me with a grade, 
and all of the assignments that I had with a due date that I have not turned in yet. I'm actually in a different Google Classroom right now, but it had the same activities and I wanted to show that I have completed all of these activities now and I know that they have also all been graded by my teacher. Now, when I go up to that view your work tab up here in the top left, since my teacher has graded all of my assignments and they are complete, I can see all of my grades here that my teacher has given me. And up here, I can see the average of what I have in the classroom so far. There are a few settings in Google Classroom. If I go up here, we call that our hamburger icon, I can click on the home button to get to my Google Classroom dashboard where I can see all of the different classrooms that I'm enrolled in. If I want to reorder my classrooms on my screen, I can just click and drag the classrooms to reorder them. Also on the left, if I click on the amber again, there is something called a to-do list. If I click onto that to-do list, I can see all of the assignments from all of the different classrooms that I'm enrolled in. I can see this bar on the side that is color coded for the different assignments. I can see which items I have to do and I can look over here and see which assignments I have done and turned in in my overall grades. Now, if I am a student and I have a Google Classroom that I was added to by mistake, or if I am no longer at that school and my teacher hadn't removed me, I can unenroll from a classroom by clicking on the top three dots in Google Classroom and click on unenroll. You will still have your files in Google Drive that will remain, but I will no longer be in this class. Please do not unenroll from a class without teacher permission. You have now learned all the basics of Google Classroom as a student. Thank you for joining me today.